Hello and welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. Today we are taking a look at a very common component in kitchen equipment and this particular part is called a contactor. And you see these used anytime there's a, a large electrical load that we need to control using some other control system. So we might have a thermostat, we might have an electronic control board, but we want to interface those to this large electrical load and we do that through the contactor. So the way this is set up, we have coil voltage that comes in and we have line voltage and we have load voltage. And when we apply coil voltage, there's a mechanical movement and that closes the contacts and connects line voltage to the load. So mechanically it's pretty simple but this particular one was sent in as a, a used component. You can see it's got a lot of dust and debris around the, the terminals here, around the opening. And this one I think is pretty well worn out. I think that's why it was replaced. So we'll open it up here and take a look. But before we do, let's go over the ratings. So we see on the face we have line side labels, L1, L2, L3, T1, T2, T3 on the load side. Then we have a 30 amp rating. So the circuit path through this is L1 connects to T1, L2 connects to T2, and L3 connects to T3. So when this pulls in, we connect top to bottom. Over here on the side, we've got a couple different load ratings. We've got voltage, so this is the voltage of the load. We've got locked rotor amps, so like if this was driving a compressor. We've got single phase ratings and three phase ratings. And in this case you can see the horsepower rating for motor control. We can control a much larger three phase motor than we can a single phase motor. And that's entirely related to amp draw. When we look at the face, the face gives us a, a component number and that 30 amp overall rating. So let's go ahead and open it up here. All right, so we've got the cover off and you can see that this is a well-used contactor. And, and the reason we know that is there's all this discoloration and dust down inside, and that tells us that this was generating arcs. So when this mechanism would pull down, there would be an electrical arc down inside at each pad, and we'll see the pads here once we get it further apart. But those electrical arcs would create this little bit of dust, this little bit of debris and discoloration. Now if you notice, two pieces came off when we took the cover off, and this little piece here is a cover for this auxiliary connection. And, and sometimes you'll see these where they have extra switches hanging on the sides of them. You can see there's another cover over on this side. And when this mechanism moves, it can actuate other switches. You can hang auxiliary switches on the sides of these. And those can be used for like a control interlock to make sure that only one contactor engages at a time or they can drive other pieces of uh, the equipment, like other components inside the machine. So let's go ahead and get it apart so you can see more of what's going on here. And we'll start, we'll take all these terminals off first, and then we'll take the base plate off and we'll get into the, the actual coil down inside here. Alright, so it's not quite entirely apart yet, but we can see more of what's going on here. And you can see down underneath now, we can get to this coil a little better. And then there's this insulator, we'll just peel that out of the way. So this is the coil 
that actually pulls the mechanical mechanism down. And we missed it in our first uh, review here, but there is a, a voltage rating on the coil and it's completely different than the voltage rating of the contacts. So in this case we can see it's a 110, 120 volt, 50, 60 hertz AC voltage coil. So it's not immediately clear how this coil is held in here. I'm not seeing a fastener or a screw or anything that I can take apart to get this coil to come out. But I have seen on some of these where you have to twist and turn the contact plates and pull them out to get the mechanism apart. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. I'm going to get the springs out and, and you can see there's little springs in there that absorb some of that motion when the contactor pulls in. So I'm going to pull those springs out and try and get these contact plates out. All right, so I don't know that you could actually see it, but here are two of the three springs. The third one shot out across the room and it's gone forever now. But those springs were holding in these contact plates with the contact pads here. And you can, you can really start to see the damage that the electrical arcing does as these contactors open and close. So every time they come together, there's an arc. And every time they come apart, there's an arc. And eventually it eats these little contact pads up. These should be bright and shiny and smooth, and you can see they're really not. They're very pitted, they're very damaged, and eventually over time, these stop passing voltage. You get resistance when these engage, and then they get hot and they begin to really come apart. But this is a good example of why a contactor is a wear part. They do wear out, they do not last forever. They have a, a finite number of cycles where they can pull these contact pads together and take them apart before they will just be worn out and need to be serviced. So let's get that last one out. So there's the last one. Let's see if that gets us where we need to go. Oh, I think I missed something here. Looks like there's a very small locking tab. Yeah, there we go. All right, so this is the coil itself. There's the connections for the coil. And then this is part of the, the iron core of that electromagnet. There's the spring that separates the contacts. And now we should be able to figure out how to get this the rest of the way apart. And it looks like, looks like we've got to maybe slide that out like that. Yep, so there goes that. There's that. All right, so let's set that off to the side. We'll come back to it. Now we can see the other surfaces, the other contact pads, and you can see how badly they're damaged. So these are the surfaces that our little tie bars would contact when this actually pulls in. And you can see just how pitted this has gotten. In some industries, the contactors are rebuildable. If they're really large or they're uniquely designed for a certain load, it's not uncommon to be able to replace these contact pads and contacts. But in this case, you can see this particular one is riveted together. So it's really not designed to be rebuildable. It's a, a one-shot piece. It's a one-use component. So this is where they fail. Now, the coil, you saw we had the spring and we had this iron core. And the iron core has this little cross tab that was locked onto our bracket here that's actually moving the, the contact pads. So when you energize this coil, it's pulling down on this bracket and this upper part of the iron core. And then when you release that voltage, when you de-energize, 
the spring pushes it apart. Part of the challenge there is that it's possible for these contact pads to stick or weld themselves together as they wear. And if that happens, this spring does not provide enough force to separate those parts again. So this is just one of the ways that these can fail. So let's review what principles we've got here. The, the biggest one, the core principle, is this electromagnet. So the electromagnet creates the motion that we need to open and close the switch. When we talk about failure modes, we've got failure up here where the contact pads have worn out. It's also possible to have them stick together. We talked about that when they weld themselves together. The other one that's possible is a failure in the coil. So in particular, this very fine wire, this very fine winding of the coil can become damaged by voltage spikes or voltage surges. But those are the those are the main failure modes. So we have contact damage, coil damage. So really when it's laid out, it's a pretty simple device. But they do fail, they do have to be maintained, they do have to be replaced regularly. Alright, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hi folks. My name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a SmartCare technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.